Hello my friends and welcome back to another video. Today is going to be my December wrap up. I read 17 books in December and I feel like December was actually a fairly good reading month for me which is I guess good because it was the last month of the year. I read some Christmassy books, I read some romance, I read some horror, I read a mishmash of things in December. I was trying to get things just done. I was trying to finish things up before the end of the year. So this wrap-up is kind of going to be all over the place, but I think it'll be fun. So let's get started and talk about the books that I read in the very last month of 2023. So first up, we'll talk about the Christmassy books that I read. The first one is The Christmas Appeal by Janice Hallett. I absolutely loved The Appeal by Janice Hallett. So when I saw that this book was out, I got really excited and I decided to pick it up. It's a very, a very quick, a very short, very easy read. I thought it would just be fun for the Christmas season and it would be a little book that I could get read really quick and easy. But in this story, we are following the Fairway players from The Appeal. So it's the same characters, you're following the same attorneys as well, and basically it's happening after what happened in The Appeal happened and they are putting on a Christmas play and it of course goes awry and there's a dead Santa. It's like a whole mess. I really enjoyed getting to see the characters again and getting just kind of sucked back into the world of the appeal. I thought it was a lot of fun. I do think that the murder mystery aspect wasn't as good and I think that just comes down to the fact that this was a really quick short novella. They didn't have time to build up this gigantic murder mystery plot like in The Appeal so I knew that going in that it wasn't going to be as good but I still thought it was a lot of fun and perfect for the Christmas season and it was just like a cute little short story and I loved reading it. I was really happy that I decided to pick it up and I just thought it was a lot of fun so I did give this four stars. Next up was Christmas Presents by Lisa Unger. This was my first book by Lisa Unger and I saw this floating around a lot on Bookstagram and I saw a lot of people reading it so I decided that I wanted to read more Christmassy thrillers and mysteries so I picked it up and wanted to see what it was all about. In this story we are following Madeline and she had like something really traumatic happen in her past and she's taking care of her father who is sick and she ends up getting her past brought back up because this famous true crime podcaster named Harley shows up and starts asking questions about what she went through. And okay, this story, I didn't hate it. It was very entertaining. I enjoyed it to an extent. I am giving it four stars because it was fun and I didn't take it too seriously and it was enjoyable, but I think as a plot it wasn't very good. I would give it three or under for plot purposes. It doesn't really have to do with Christmas. It takes place during Christmas. It's called Christmas Presents, but the Christmas aspect isn't really that big of a deal. I feel like Lisa Unger kind of just wanted to make a Christmassy thriller and put the word Christmas on it, but it's not really about Christmas or has really anything to do with Christmas. So I think as a plot, it's just fine. It's very predictable. I guessed it extremely early on what was going on. So it's not like anything new or different or special or unique. It's not anything like that exciting. But like, again, it was entertaining. It kept me interested. I read the whole thing. Did I roll my eyes a few times? Sure. But like, did I hate it? Not really. So for enjoyment, it's like a four. For plot, it's like a three. So I don't know. I think I'm gonna give it four because it wasn't that bad, but I don't think a lot of people are gonna like it. Next up, I read Duke Actually by Jenny Holiday. I did not realize that this is the second book in a series. Uh, I guess when I bought it, I did not pay attention to that. So <laughs> that was my bad because I don't have the first book and I never read it so luckily it's one of those like series that is more like about the side characters when they get their own book you know what I mean so it's not like a series series where you have to read the first book but I was a little annoyed with myself that I didn't 
pay attention to that. But this is about the characters Max and Danny. Max is a duke and Danny is a English professor. And Danny has sworn off men. She doesn't want to date because she's going through some things with her husband who she's trying to divorce. And Max is really drawn to Danny and they become friends and they start getting to know one another and hang out and yada yada yada. You know how it goes in romances. But this was actually really cute. I actually really enjoyed this. I didn't expect to, but I actually thought it was really sweet. It's one of those romances where not a lot is happening. A majority of the book is just about the two characters becoming friends and learning to trust each other and spending a lot of time with each other and just like setting the groundwork as friends for them to then become you know, love interests, and I thought it was really sweet. There's like very, 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 very little smut in this. Towards the end, there's like maybe a few scenes, but it's not really that smutty at all. It's definitely one of those like more wholesome <laughs> romances, which I guess makes sense because it is more of like a Christmassy romance, but it was very cute. I enjoyed it. There's a dog in it, so I had a lot of fun reading this, and it was really enjoyable actually. I didn't think I was gonna like it, but I was pleasantly surprised, and I think I'm gonna give this one four stars. And then lastly for Christmassy books and also another Christmas romance is One Day in December by Josie Silver. I got this as my book of the month pick like, I don't know, a few Decembers ago, maybe last December or the December before that. I don't really remember, but I've had this on my TBR for a while and I really wanted to get some of the Christmas romances I had off my TBR because I don't really read them any other time except for in December. So I was like, I need to get this off and red. I need to get it out of here. And I've heard a lot of good things about this one. Unfortunately, I was not a fan. It has a lot of tropes and a lot of just like things in romances that I can't stand. So I just didn't have the best time with this one. But this is about the characters Lori and Jack. Lori is on the bus one evening in December and when the bus stops she makes eye contact with this guy who's outside and I don't know they have this like instant connection and before he can get on the bus the bus drives away and she basically spends a whole year trying to find this mystery guy because she's basically in love with him from this instant connection that they had and when her best friend and roommate introduces her to her new guy, she ends up meeting busboy who is Jack and obviously they can't have anything because he's now dating her best friend. And this book is taking place over 10 years and it's just them never really being able to make it work. Things getting in the way, other people getting in the way, family situations getting in the way, just life in general getting in the way and them not being able to make it work. That's a very real thing. I know people experience that all the time. You know, I like it in real life. I think that whole right person wrong time is a very real thing, but in books and movies it drives me insane. Like I don't like it. <laughs> and if I had known that when I picked this up, I would never have gotten this. I don't think I read the plot, <laughs> so that's totally my fault. Uh, but yeah, this just had a lot of things that I can't stand in romances. This is very much for people who want like real people being real people, so making mistakes, having flaws, going through real life situations, which I know a lot of people do enjoy and so do I, but I think for like Christmassy romances I'm more waiting for like, you know, cheese and Hallmark cutesy fun. This was kind of depressing and honestly kind of put me in like a Okay, I'm done with Christmas romances for the month, so I only read two because this one really just put me off of them for the rest of the year, basically. So, um, yeah, I just I wasn't a fan of what this was. I think it had some good things going for it, but it was honestly just like a really frustrating read, and I really didn't care about Lori or Jack. I didn't care if they got together. I was actually rooting for them not to get together a lot because I just felt like they weren't good for each other. This was just like a frustrating romance. I wasn't really a fan of it. <laughs> I am gonna give it three stars because it wasn't 
terrible and it is my own fault that I didn't pay attention to the tropes used so next up is moon of the crusted snow by wabgishig rice i think i am pronouncing this author's name correctly if i am not please feel free to correct me in the comments down below i did listen to a pronunciation but i could be totally off this was actually my patreon book club's pick for december and this is about an indigenous community that gets cut off from power and communications during the winter time so it's basically an apocalypse story and I'll be honest I'm not the biggest fan of apocalypse type stories type horror it's just not something that I in general think is my thing I'm just never really gravitating towards that kind of story but I've heard really great things about this book and it's really short so I figured that it would be a really good read for the end of the year and just to have as a book club pick because I felt like it would bring a lot of discussion so I was pretty excited about this one and honestly <laughs> I feel like this one is similar to how Battle Royale went for me in my book club. I felt like everyone else wasn't like obsessed with it but they liked it but I really actually loved this one. I'm giving it four and a half stars. One, I thought the indigenous folklore was really really good. I thought it was so interesting and the writing is really really beautiful and it's really easy to follow. The chapters are fairly short and again it's a really quick read so I think that really worked in my favor as well but I think what I really love about this story <laughs> which I think is probably why everyone else didn't like it is you don't really learn about the apocalypse this story is not really about the apocalypse itself it's about like the effects of of the apocalypse on the community and how they are dealing with it and what's happening to them as a whole which I found way more interesting <laughs> like I said I don't care about apocalypse stories so I feel like where a lot of people felt there was information missing and a lot left to be answered I was happy that none of that was around I was like yes this is perfect for me so I think this was just kind of like the perfect story for someone like me who doesn't like apocalypse stories it also went in a direction that I wasn't necessarily shocked by but I wasn't expecting which I kind of loved as well and I love the ending I know this is getting a sequel this year in 2024 which I'm really excited about and I will 100% be checking it out there were some things and this isn't really the author's fault or the writing's fault but like some things did like trigger me <laughs> and remind me of the beginning of 2020 when you know things were happening <laughs> like there's a scene at a grocery store and I was like oh this is this is a little too much for me I don't I don't like that so I think that's kind of why it was only a 4.5 and not a 5 because I was like okay some of it's a little a little much for me I could have done without that but it was important to the story that was just like a me thing not the book's fault otherwise I really loved this I thought it was amazing and super fun super enjoyable and this was actually my last read of 2023 which I was really excited about okay next up is familiar spirit by Lisa Tuttle this is a paperbacks from hell and I ended up picking this up because a nest of nightmares by Lisa Tuttle is a short story collection Collection that I think is absolutely incredible so I wanted to read more from Lisa Tuttle and honestly I didn't love this but I didn't really hate it it's about the main character Sarah who gets a new house and when she moves in weird stuff starts happening and basically something wants to possess her that's pretty much the story it I don't know it felt very much like a 70s B horror movie which isn't necessarily a bad thing but it just wasn't really good in my opinion I didn't think it was like anything special or wild I feel like the story was something I've seen like a lot like a lot a lot so I think that was kind of working against it just because it wasn't really anything like interesting to me Again, it is an older book. Came out in 1983, so I'm not like shocked that it wasn't like super mind blowing to me or anything like that, but it was a quick, easy read. I read it, so I am giving this three stars. 
Also, there is some weird, like, smutty scenes in here, um, which I wasn't expecting, uh, and it was very weird, so, again, reminded me of, like, 70s and 80s B-horror, so I was like, oh, okay, all right. But yeah, three stars. Next up was actually my favorite read of December. It's the only book I gave five stars and I absolutely loved it. And that is The Rules of Magic by Alice Hoffman. I read Practical Magic last October and I bought this one because I wanted to continue the series. I gave Practical Magic four stars, but I actually loved this one way more. This one's actually my favorite so far. But this is about the ants from Practical Magic, so Jet and and Franny Owens and this is like their story and they're kind of like growing up as teenagers and stuff like that. It was a very interesting. I felt like this one had a lot that lacked in practical magic for me. Like I felt like this one felt a lot more witchy. I felt like practical magic lacked that. I, I think that's because I compared it a, a little bit to the movie because I know the movie so well. So I think Practical Magic had like a lot to live up to. I had been raised on that movie so I know it so well. So this one, it was different. I didn't have much expectations about it. I didn't really know what it was going to be about. I didn't know what was going to happen. So I think it was able to be like its own book without me comparing it to anything else which worked in its favor it made me cry it was a little bit more depressing honestly like it was a very sad book but it was so beautiful like I absolutely loved this story I will 100% be buying the other books in the series because I loved this one so 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 much I'm technically reading these in publication order so this is like the second book in my order. Yeah, I absolutely love this one. I thought it was so just, uh, it just made me so excited to read, which I hadn't been feeling in such a long time because I've had such a bad streak with reading. And this one made me cry. It was making me upset, but it was making me happy. It was making me laugh. Like, I just enjoyed this one so much. So this is getting five stars from me. The next book is Psycho by Robert Block. This is a classic, obviously. And I had been putting reading this book off because I know the movie so well. I've seen the movie so many times and I think you just get kind of nervous when you've seen the movie so many times and you haven't read the book yet. But I actually did enjoy this book. I mean, I felt like there wasn't a way that I was gonna not like it. I didn't think there was gonna be any reason for me not to like it. I didn't think that this book was gonna be that different that I wasn't going to like it because I do love the movie. So I did think some things were very interesting. I thought that we got a lot more from Norman, which was pretty exciting. But honestly, there wasn't that much different. I felt like the movie is a pretty faithful adaptation of the novel, which I think is really cool. Um, it was interesting to read. I, I enjoyed the time that I spent reading it. It's a very quick, a very easy read. And again, it's a classic, so I feel like me being a horror fan, I had to read it at some point, so I'm glad that I finally got it done. I still think I like the movie better, honestly. I'm gonna be honest, that's... I, I don't think I could like the movie less than the book at this point, so I am giving this four stars. Then we have Autumn Bleeds Into Winter by Jeff Strand. This is a horror thriller. It's categorized as horror on Goodreads, but honestly, it's very much a thriller in my opinion. I don't think it is a horror novel. But this is about the main character, Curtis, who is 14, and he witnesses his best friend, Todd, get kidnapped. He actually sees the person do it. He knows who it is. He knows the man. So he ends up telling the police and Todd's parents and he lets them know that he saw him, he knows who it is, and he tells them who it is. But when the police, you know, go investigate, there's no evidence. So they can't really do anything about it. It's just Curtis's word and there's no proof. So Curtis goes to try and prove it himself. This was actually really entertaining. It reminded me of the movie Disturbia with Shia LaBeouf. If you've seen the movie, I feel like you know what I'm talking about. And it was really intense. It was a very quick, easy, fast-paced read. I feel like a lot of people will actually like it because I feel like a lot of people enjoy these types of stories. I know I do. I always enjoy coming-of-age stories where the main character has to kind of solve 
something on his own. I don't know. I just find that really entertaining and I of course love stories that have to do with missing persons or kidnappings or disappearances. I always find those really exciting as well. This takes place in 1979 and in Alaska which I thought was a really cool setting and time period to take place in and I think it just worked the best for the overall story. My only criticism of this story <laughs> is that I think the writing is very simple and very unpolished at times. I don't think it's necessarily bad. I just think that some people will not love how simple the writing is. It did frustrate me sometimes because we're reading about 14 year old Curtis but it's written as Curtis as an adult telling the story and sometimes it felt like Curtis was still 14. It felt a little juvenile at times. So I feel like the writing could frustrate a lot of people because of how simple and juvenile it can feel. Uh, but I think if you're in the market for something really easy and quick and fast and you want to be more entertained than read something like super deep and profound and you know literary i think that you would probably still enjoy this because i did so i am giving it four and a half stars then we have tear by erica mckean this is a very interesting book <laughs> i don't know how many people will actually like this but believe it or not i actually really really enjoyed this story it's actually broken up into like three kinds of parts. So the first part deals with Frances who's living in the basement of this house that her and some girls are renting because they go to college and Frances doesn't really go upstairs. She kind of just stays to the basement and her roommates very rarely see her. And in the first part you get Frances in the basement and she's kind of reminiscing about her childhood. It has a very surreal, dreamlike, stream of consciousness kind of vibe. It's also very like literary, um, very lit thick writing. And then the second part focuses on Frances's roommates. And then the third part <laughs> is from the perspective of this monster and it's a very Frankenstein. It's very body horror forward. All three parts are very different from each other. They have a very different tone but they do work together pretty well. It's just a little odd. I think the first two parts work much better together and then the third part felt a little disconnected. You can definitely feel the Frankenstein inspiration. I just think that for me, if this book is all about the vibes and nothing else, it's like a five star because the vibes were crazy. It's very unhinged. It's very weird. It's very bizarre. It's just like, it's a weird little book. But if there's like a message, <laughs> like if there's like, you know, a, a literary horror message that I'm not getting, which could totally be possible because I don't always get those. But if that's the case, then it's more like a four and a half because I really don't know what the messaging was unless the message is exactly the same as Frankenstein, which if it is, then I got it. 100%. Totally know what's going on then. But if there was something else happening besides that, then I don't know. Again, I think it's going to have to hit its audience because I don't think everyone will love this, but I actually really did enjoy it. Again, the vibes were great. I enjoyed it. Didn't understand all of it, but I enjoyed it, so I'm giving it four and a half. Oh, goody, it's time to talk about The Paul Bears Club by Paul Tremblay. So if you saw my worst books of 2023, uh, this was in there. I did not enjoy this book, which I know a lot of people told me I probably wasn't going to enjoy it. A lot of people told me that they hated it. And you know what? Mm, yep, I get it <laughs> because I don't understand what this book was trying to do at all. This is written as a memoir, you're following Art in his life and how he started this Paul Bears Club and he meets this person named Mercy and you're actually getting the notes of Mercy reading the memoir and like marking up the manuscript, basically adding her own 
stuff to the memoir, you know, adding her own thoughts and feelings about what Art has been writing. And so I guess we're reading the finished copy, I would assume, the finished book, the finished product, whatever you want to call it. It also has a vampire-ish story to it, and I say vampire-ish because honestly it's not really a vampire story. I don't really understand what that was really doing in here. I feel like Paul Tremblay was trying to make two different stories, and instead of picking one story, he kind of rode the middle between both stories and then just gave us this. So I really don't understand what this book was trying to say or do. I mean, I get it to an extent. I, I kind of got it, but like, it didn't really work for me. <laughs> it also comes off super pretentious. The main character, Art, is super annoying to read from. I didn't care about his life. I didn't care about pretty much 90% of the things he was talking about. I just didn't really get it. Honestly, I just didn't really get it. This is not a horror. This is not a thriller. So I don't really know what it is, but it didn't work for me. I'm giving it two stars. Then we have My Darling Girl by Jennifer McMahon. I also didn't like this, which is kind of crazy because I keep saying I like Jennifer McMahon, but I feel like the only book I've actually liked from her is The Winter People. I feel like everything else I haven't enjoyed. But this is about the main character, Allison, who has this picture-perfect life. Everything's just wonderful and perfect and awesome and great and then her estranged mother gets diagnosed with cancer and she wants to spend her remaining days with her daughter and her daughter's family and her mother was extremely abusive she was an alcoholic and she decides that she wants to try to fix the relationship with her mother so she lets her move in scary things begin happening and she thinks like something else is going on with her mom now the reason I don't like this book is I think the whole thing is frustrating. I think it was trying to do something, but it didn't really work in the book's favor. I think <laughs> it could have been really good. I do. I think this story could have been great, but I don't really think all the pieces really fit the puzzle, you know? And I've kind of noticed that's a thing with Jennifer McMahon and me. I feel like a lot of her books could be really good and they have a lot of things going for them, but all of the stuff together just doesn't really work. And I didn't love the idea of this story about Allison and her mom. I really didn't like the direction that this book took. It could have been okay, but I think, I don't know, I, I, I just think something should have been done differently with it. I would love to go into more detail, but it's all spoilery, so I can't. But it just really wasn't for me, which is actually kind of crazy because this has a trope that I do tend to like in horror if it's done correctly, but I feel like this wasn't done correctly for me, so I have to give it two and a half stars. The ending was also extremely frustrating and kind of weak in my opinion. So yeah, this is probably my least favorite of Jennifer McMahon's now. Then I read Blood on the Tracks volume 14 by Shuzo Oshimi. I mean, I've talked about this series so many times. I love it. This volume was a lot. <laughs> I say that also too much about this series. I feel like every volume I get I'm like, well that was a lot and this one is no different. It was a lot. Very sad, very depressing. The series has taken just like a very depressing route. It was a lot more dark and horrifying and not that it isn't now but it's just really sad. It's just really really sad now but again I love this series. It's one of my favorite manga series of all time. I love every volume. This one hurt my heart, but they all do, so that's no surprise. I'm giving it five stars because I rate manga based on the series, not by the volume, and this series is a five-star series, so it is getting five stars. 
And then I read Monday's Not Coming by Tiffany D. Jackson, which I know so many people have been waiting for me to read and I've been putting it off. But this is about the main character, Claudia, whose best friend Monday goes missing and no one seems to care. I really did enjoy this book. I love Tiffany D. Jackson. I think she's an incredible author. I think everything she writes is fantastic. I think she just knows how to do a story. I think she's just a great storyteller. I've been putting this one off because I knew it was going to be really, really sad. <laughs> and it really was. It was a really, really sad story. I'm not shocked by this story. I wasn't really surprised by any of it. I think I knew from the very beginning, even before I even read it, what this story was going to be. And it is extremely hard hitting. It is extremely emotional. It's really just sad and it's very real. Like this is a very realistic story and I think that's what makes it so hard hitting and so heartbreaking and so devastating is because it is such a real story. I still don't think it's my favorite. I have to be honest. White Smoke just wins. I love White Smoke with every fiber of my being. It is without a doubt my favorite Tiffany D. Jackson. I think everything about it is perfection. It hit me the most out of all her reads. I think it's because I could see myself in the main character and I had a lot of similarities with that character and I think it just was like super hard hitting for me in that sense. So while I do love this one and it probably is my second favorite, I just love White Smoke so much more. I can't help it. I'm sorry. I know. But I did really enjoy this book. I think I was a little sad that I already knew what the story was. Not that I think that's necessarily a bad thing. I just don't think anything was super surprising in this book. There was like one twist which I kind of had suspected <laughs> when it was happening um, only because I had noticed some things that I thought were a little odd um, but I didn't know the full twist so when it happened I was like oh interesting okay didn't expect that but again I don't think this book is meant to be shocking in the way that like thrillers are meant to be shocking. I think this is just meant to be devastatingly shocking, which it does do. So I am giving this four and a half stars. Then we have I Who Have Never Known Men by Jacqueline Harpman and I've also heard a lot of great things about this book. I was really looking forward to it. It's a very quick and easy read, but this is about 39 women that are living in this bunker and they are guarded by these men and they have no recollection or really any memory of how they got in this bunker, why they're in their bunker. They just don't know and they just live day to day like this. This is a very interesting story. I definitely understand why people love it so much. For me personally, while I did enjoy it and I did actually really like this book, I don't love open-ended stories like this. I don't love having more questions at the end of a book than when I started the book. That's really frustrating for me and it's a really frustrating experience for me when I'm reading. So for me, while I liked the idea of this and I think the writing was really good and I did like the story. I just didn't really like how I never really got any answers or really clarification or really any ending. The ending's just kind of like, there it is. And I'm like, okay. So I think that's just a personal preference. And for me, it was like, kind of frustrating to read even though I really did enjoy the book. I loved how that it was a feminist story. I liked that it was a dystopian story and it was beautifully written. I really did like it. I just think personally it left too many questions that left me frustrated and kind of ruined some of the experience for me but I do understand why so many people love this book and I understand why it's recommended all the time. I do really like it. I would just probably give it four stars over five because I would have liked a hint 
a breadcrumb of information, of something, um, just because that's the type of reader that I am. And then we have Indigo Ridge by Devney Perry. This is the first book in like a romance mystery series, I believe. So this is about the main character, Winslow, who is the new chief of police in Quincy, Montana. And she's trying to prove herself to the community because her grandfather is the mayor and everyone believes that she got this new job because of her grandfather. And she ends up sleeping with this guy her first night in town. His name is Griffin and you know it's a one night stand whatever. She finds out that he's the son of like the most important family in Quincy and she's like great that's really gonna help and he's not happy that he slept with her either so it's like a whole thing they're like not happy about it and then they find this a dead woman on griffin's property so she kind of has to spend some time with him and get involved with him and stuff and blah 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 so i i don't know why i thought i was gonna like this i thought i was gonna like like the mystery aspect of this story i don't really like books about police officers or detectives or any type of cops, I just don't really care. I don't find that job interesting. I don't want to read about it. I don't like that. It's just not something I enjoy. So I really just hated her job as a cop. I was like, this is stupid. I don't really care. Now the love interest, Griffin, I couldn't stand him. He was so annoying and he was so demeaning and rude and he made like a lot of comments about her not being able to do her job and he was just really obnoxious and I did not like them together at all even though that was like the whole point of the book so I just really didn't care about the romance which again is the whole point of the book and then the mystery is basically not mysterious at all because I thought it was super obvious what was going on the entire time so I just didn't like this that much. I mean it was fine. I finished it. Some parts I thought were good but like I didn't like them as a couple. I didn't like her job. I didn't like the mystery which is like you know the whole point of the book so I don't know. I gave it three stars but honestly it's probably more of like a two and a half star book. And the last book is Just Another Missing Person by Jillian McAllister. I wanted to read this because Wrong Place Wrong Time was one of my favorite books of the year. But speaking about not liking cop or detective characters or jobs in my stories, that's what this is. This is about the main character Julia who is a detective and she gets assigned this missing persons case. Her name is Olivia. She's like 22. She walked into this alley and they have CCTV of her walking into this alley and she was just never seen again. They don't have any footage of her coming out and there was really no plausible way for her to get out of the alleyway. But then Julia gets blackmailed because she has a secret and this person says, hey I'm gonna let your secret out if you don't plant some evidence and get this person convicted for Olivia's disappearance. Now when I started it I was not that invested because again don't like cop stories, don't like detective stories, don't like those kinds of characters, not super interested. I was already not as excited about it as Wrong Place, Wrong Time, and honestly, up until about halfway through the book, I wasn't really that invested, but I will say this book did turn it around. I did overall like how everything came together and the ending and how everything like worked out. I do think this author is very talented. I don't think this one is as interesting or unique as Wrong Place Wrong Time, but I do think that it's more worth a read than I thought it was initially. I am giving this four stars because it held my attention and the second half was way more exciting in my opinion. I do think some of it was a little, a little predictable, but it did have some good twists that I wasn't expecting and I feel like this author just kind of does twists really well. So I, I did enjoy this book more than I thought I was going to, so I am giving it four stars. That's probably a little lenient. It's probably more of like a three and a half, but because because I did like everything, how it turned out and everything, I am giving it four stars. That is going to do it for my December wrap up. It is now 2024. I'm still behind on wrap ups. Will I ever be able to get my wrap up? 
up before the beginning of a new month? Probably not. Probably not. I will probably always be behind on wrap-ups. That's just how I am. So hopefully you enjoyed watching the books and listening to the books that I read in December and how I felt about them. I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments down below. If you read these and you agree with me or you disagree with me, I would love to know. Let me know what your favorite or at least favorite book of December was. I would also love to know so that way if I haven't read it, I can add it to my TBR. And if you enjoyed this video, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. That way I know that you enjoy my wrap ups and I can keep doing them for you all in the future. If you haven't already, feel free to subscribe to my channel. I also have a Patreon linked down in the description box where we can become friends, talk about books, horrifying books, thrilling books, romance books, manga, all that good fun stuff. And with that being said, I hope you are having a great January, a great start to your 2024, a great day, night, morning, afternoon, wherever you are. And I will see you in my next video. Bye.